Hello and welcome to section Let's Get Rendering. In this section we're going to take a look at the game loop, what it is and how we're going to use it with our surface view. Then we're going to use the surface view to render shapes and then we're going to have a look at events like touch and how our game is going to react to those events. In this video we're finally going to use the Android SDK to start the actual game development of our game. We're going to take a look at the surface view and to set that as a basis for our renderer and how the system clock works and ticks. So first things first, we're going to want to make our game full screen without an action bar, without the status bar showing, without the navigation bar showing as well, like our normal Android app is. Uh, so how we go about doing this is after the app is created, so after the onCreate method is called, uh, but before we set the content view, we want to disable the action bar by request window feature, window dot feature no title, semicolon. And then we can make the game full screen with get window dot set flags window manager window manager go layout params dot flag full screen comma copy and paste this. I'm just gonna do it on a new line just so everything's all you know in one place. Our content view isn't gonna be set to this XML layout. We're going to create a brand new surface view, as I mentioned earlier, and use that to render our game. So here I'm going to type a new game and pass in this activity. Of course, game doesn't exist. So we're going to go under app, Java, our package, and create a brand new class. And of course, we're going to call this game. As I said, this game is going to be a surface view. Game extends surface view. And it also implements surface holder dot callback. Okay, uh, we're going to get an error here, so we can just click on that, hold Alt, and hit Enter, and that'll give us a prompt to import that class. Okay, and of course we need a constructor, so public game, and we're going to give it a parameter of context. Alt Enter to import that. And we're just going to call the super method here, context. But we're still going to get errors here because there are unimplemented methods. And we're going to go ahead and override and implement those methods right now. So the first one is override public void surface created. Surface holder holder. The second one is public void surface changed. Now this one's got a lot of parameters, so bear with me. Surface holder, holder, an integer for format, another integer width, and another integer height. And last but not least, public void surface destroyed. And that's just that just takes in a surface holder. So now we have all that. We need a thread for the game loop probably best that we do this in another class. So new Java class, and we're going to name this game thread. So this is going to extend thread, just the typical Java thread. And what a game loop actually is, is the concept of the game running through this, well, this loop once every frame. And you have a set amount of methods that run per frame. So in our case, we're going to have the game is going to call a render method and an update method, and they're going to be called once per frame. Our game is going to have 30 frames per second, so our game loop is going to be running at 30 ticks per second. So each time the game loop runs, I'm going to be referring to that as a tick. So this game loop is going to be creating this game thread, so that and then that's going to be called from the game, which is our actual surface, which is our you know, rendering surface. And that's going to be within this main activity. Hopefully that's not too confusing. So in this thread, we're just going to define a few things. Uh, we're going to define frames per second cap, which in this case is going to be 30. We need to keep account of our average FPS, just so we can print that to the console, just to see what what FPS we're getting. Uh, we're going to also need a surface holder. We need an instance of our game here. 
we need a boolean to keep track of whether or not the game is actually running so if this gets destroyed then obviously the game is no longer running and we also need a canvas to actually draw on and import that so let's create the constructor public game thread this is going to take the surface holder and the game instances Gonna rename that as well. I don't want it to be that ambiguous. Uh, we're just gonna call the super method and then set the surface holder that we pass in and the game instance that we also pass in to this thread. You should be familiar with the thread uh, class in Java and as we know the thread has the run method so we're gonna override that run method public void run and in here we're going to initialize a lot more variables and just bear with me this is going to get a bit confusing um, this is why a lot of people tend to go for other game engines that sort this stuff out for us but it's good to know where everything comes from and long target time so just initialize these variables and I'm going to go through them as we start using them rather than go through what each thing is once we've initialized. So just initialize these variables as I've set them out and let's go through the actual game loop. While the game is running the start time is going to be equal to whatever the system time is in nanoseconds. Uh, we're going to initialize our canvas and then we're going to try and lock the canvas this dot surface holder dot lock canvas synchronized surface holder uh, if that's a success then we're, this is the important part from the game class we're going to call the update method which we haven't made yet but we we will go back and do that uh, in fact well, we may as well do it now so go back into game and then let's just make public void update so anything that you want to run with per tick that isn't a draw method then that would go and update so for example uh, updating someone's health you know that is something you'd want to update but it isn't something you are rendering so that's one thing we want called and the second thing we want called is our game dot draw and that is essentially our render method so these two well anything within this container is our game loop essentially. So because we're trying this obviously we need to catch a potential exception and finally if the canvas is not null we're going to unlock the canvas. But again we need to try this. We need to catch this exception. So I realize that a lot of this, this is quite overwhelming and complicated. Uh, we haven't really got so complicated stuff yet. But the block of code you need to focus on really here is this. This is the game loop. All this is just Android Canvas stuff that is a bit <laughs> tedious. But here is the game loop. Anything you want to uh, update per tick, this is where you would. Now we can carry on with actually setting up this whole tick system. So time millis equals system dot nano time, which is the time after all this has happened. So we grab the start time, then we're going to grab the time again after all this has occurred, and we're going to subtract it from our start time. And we're going to divide this by one million, and this is then going to get the time after all this in milliseconds. Remember, we grab the time in nanoseconds. We're then going to divide it by a million to then get it in milliseconds. We're then going to specify a wait time. So how long are we going to wait until we should draw again? Because there's no point drawing unnecessary frames, are there? So we're going to grab our target time, which is a thousand over our FPS. We're going to grab our target time and subtract that by this time that we've just taken here. We're then going to execute this wait. So this starts sleep uh, for the time we need to wait and then catch this exception here 
and then this isn't necessary for the game loop but this I just want to show you and that's to calculate the average FPS so how we would do this we would grab the total time and add the system time at this point minus the start time increase the frame count by one and then as soon as the frame count then reaches the FPS we're then going to calculate the average FPS which is 100 divided by the total time divided by the frame count and all of that divided by once again 1 million so that we can have it in milliseconds then we're gonna reset the frame counter reset the total time and finally print out our average FPS before we go back into that game class we want to make one final method and that's public void set running just so that we can change the value of this running boolean outside of the game thread so set running to boolean just so we can start the game and kill the game uh, running equal is running hop back into our game class and we're gonna now initialize that thread so private game thread and then give it a value before we do that we're going to get holder add callback this is just so that the callback is set to the surface view so that we can have events triggered from here and after that we're gonna make our thread equal to new game thread get holder and then pass this game in we're then going to make this surface view uh, the focused view and as soon as the surface is created we're going to thread.set running to true and then we're going to start the thread once surface is destroyed we're going to first create a boolean called retry because it can take a few times to actually attempt to kill the thread when the surface is destroyed so while retry is true go ahead and set the thread to false the thread dot join catch that exception as an interrupted exception and print and once that's accomplished then we don't need to retry it so to recap if we go into the main activity the app gets created Everything is said set to full screen, and the content view is set to this game, which is provided the context of the main activity. The game starts, everything is initialized, including this thread. Once everything's initialized, then that surface has been created. And as soon as the surface has been created, the thread then gets ran. The thread starts to run, and because running is set to true, this is this game loop is going to kick off, and there this game.update and this game.draw canvas is going to update 30 times every second. So if we go ahead and run this, and as you can see, our game is outputting at 29 FPS consistently. Good enough. Just a slight amendment before we run the game. Uh, this is meant to be 1000, not 100.